Apple, Nvidia, AMD, all of them can design the smartest chips in the world. But in 2025, that's no longer where the real power is. We've entered a new era. And in this era, the winner is not the company with the fastest chip or the smallest nanometer size. The winner is the company that can manufacture the most chips at the fastest pace with the highest reliability. Silicon supremacy has shifted. It's no longer a race of specs. It's a race of capacity, the ability to produce millions of chips when the world demands them. And right now, this single shift has quietly rewritten the balance of power across the entire global tech industry. For years, companies have sold us the same idea, more power, more speed, more efficiency. Keynotes were filled with graphs, benchmarks, shrinking nanometers, and impressive technical jargon. Consumers believed this was the heart of innovation. But behind the scenes, something far more important was happening. Chip design was accelerating, faster than ever, but chip manufacturing wasn't keeping up. Designing a new chip might take 18 months, but building the factory to manufacture it at scale? That takes up to a decade. And when demand for chips exploded driven by AI servers, autonomous vehicles, data centers, cloud platforms, and consumer electronics design brilliance suddenly didn't matter if the world couldn't physically produce enough chips. This is the uncomfortable truth exposed in 2025. Even the most powerful chip is worthless if you can't manufacture it at scale. Capacity has quietly become the most important currency in the tech world. Three numbers now decide everything. How many wafers a factory can process, how many of those wafers produce functioning chips, and how long companies must wait before their next manufacturing slot becomes available. A company that produces 10 million chips will always outperform a company that produces 2 million, even if the second chip is technically better. This is why capacity has replaced specs as the real metric of power. Nowhere is this more visible than in the global dependence on one company, TSMC, the Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company. It's not a household brand like Apple or Samsung, but it is the single most important tech company on Earth. More than 90% of the world's most advanced chips, the chips inside iPhones, AI servers, supercomputers, autonomous vehicles, come from its factories in Taiwan. NVIDIA depends on TSMC. Apple depends on TSMC. AMD, Qualcomm, Tesla, all rely on this one company. But TSMC has a limit. There is only one TSMC, and global demand has pushed it to its edge. The world learned this when NVIDIA's Blackwell GPUs, the most in-demand AI chips on the planet, faced production delays simply because TSMC couldn't fit them into the manufacturing schedule fast enough. The bottleneck was not innovation, it was capacity. This realization triggered a global response. The United States, China, and Europe launched the largest semiconductor investment wave in history. The United States Chips Act committed over $52 billion to rebuild domestic manufacturing, funding new Intel fabs in Arizona, New Mexico, and Ohio, as well as TSMC's and Samsung's American expansions. But these projects quickly exposed the real challenge. You cannot buy capacity, you must build it. Intel's new fabs require thousands of highly specialized workers, dozens of EUV machines, and years of calibration before they reach competitive yield levels. Meanwhile, China launched more than $150 billion in semiconductor investments to become self-sufficient. They built new fabrication plants, developed their own manufacturing tools, and expanded companies like SMIC. But China remains limited in advanced chip production because EUV machines, the key to making five nanometers, three nanometers, and two nanometers chips are only sold by ASML, a Dutch company restricted from exporting to China. So China has shifted strategy. They're building massive capacity in older nodes like 14 nanometers and 28 nanometers, chips used in cars, appliances, and industrial systems. Even though they can't beat the United States and Taiwan in cutting edge nodes, their volume gives them power in global supply chains. This has created the first global capacity war. Countries are no longer fighting for faster chips. They're fighting for the ability to manufacture them. The semiconductor industry has become a matter of national security because every modern technology, artificial intelligence, cloud computing, military defense systems, depends on chips. Without secure manufacturing capacity, entire economies are at risk. And this brings us to the harshest economic reality of all. Semiconductor manufacturing is one of the most expensive and complex businesses ever created. A single advanced fab can cost 25 to $35 billion. TSMC's plant in Arizona is delayed and over budget. Samsung's Texas fab is heading toward $30 billion. 
and even after construction, these fabs require years of fine tuning to reach stable production levels. The real power isn't just in having a factory, it's in achieving high yields. If a plant produces 10,000 wafers a month but only 50% of the chips are usable, the factory is losing money. But if another facility produces the same number of wafers with 95% success, that factory becomes a global powerhouse. This is why TSMC dominates the world. Their yields are unparalleled. Companies like Apple and Nvidia don't choose TSMC because it's convenient. They choose TSMC because it's reliable. For over 20 years, TSMC has perfected processes, trained teams, and built a culture where manufacturing excellence is the core value. This reliability is priceless. It's the reason the entire global tech ecosystem leans on one island. But now, a new dynamic is emerging. Companies are no longer competing with each other on performance. They're competing for manufacturing slots. NVIDIA's current dominance is not only because their chips are powerful, it's because they have already booked years of TSMC's manufacturing capacity. Even if a competitor designs a similar chip, they may not be able to produce it for 12 to 18 months. This shift is invisible to consumers, but critical inside the industry. Capacity contracts have become more valuable than the chips themselves. Apple signs huge long-term agreements to lock in production for A-series and M-series chips. Tesla secures dedicated automotive chip lines. Amazon, Microsoft, and Google negotiate manufacturing priority for their custom AI chips. Intel has even shifted part of its business model to selling manufacturing capacity as a service. All of this leads us to the final bottleneck, ASML. The Dutch company produces the EUV lithography machines required to make the world's most advanced processors. These machines are among the most complex devices ever built, with over 100,000 parts and a price tag of around $200 million each. ASML can only build around 30 EUV machines per year. Every advanced fab needs dozens of them. This means the world literally cannot expand advanced chip manufacturing quickly, no matter how much money is invested. The limiting factor is the availability of EUV machines. This brings us directly into the two nanometer chip race. TSMC, Samsung, and Intel are all racing toward mass production. TSMC plans risk production in 2025. Samsung aims for 2025 as well with its second generation gate all around technology. Intel, trying to reclaim leadership, is pushing its 18A node as a competitive alternative. But the real challenge for all three is the same, manufacturing capacity. Whoever achieves stable, high yield, two nanometers manufacturing first will define the next decade of AI and computing. So here's the truth, the industry is finally beginning to understand. The future of artificial intelligence won't be determined by the companies with the smartest engineers or the best research labs. It will be determined by physical factories, the quiet, robotic, hyper-controlled buildings where microscopic circuits are printed onto silicon wafers. This is the hidden backbone of the digital world. The companies that can design the best chips will always matter, but the companies that can manufacture the most chips will decide the future. In 2025, the rules of the game have changed. Innovation alone isn't enough. Capacity is everything. Capacity determines who gets chips, who scales their AI models, who dominates autonomous driving, who powers cloud platforms, and who defines the next wave of global technology. We are now living in a world where the most valuable resource isn't data, or software, or even AI algorithms. It's the ability to manufacture the silicon that makes all of those things possible. The chip race has become physical, industrial, and geopolitical. And it has only just begun.